I say, the rest of the teams are pretty much forgettable. But the Jets, you know, at one point, they actually had a winning record. Then the, then everything came at them like a bus, and they presumably uh, screwed up. But is this a team that can regain any sense of power that they once had, presumably 2009, 2010? Or is this a team that's just going to be bottom barrel for the rest of the for the rest of their days. Let's have a look. So they did draft a new quarterback, Sam Darnold, trade out for him in the third in the third overall pick. And of course, they signed uh, Teddy Bridgewater. And, they got, and of course, uh, they they bring back Josh McCown. Hmm. I I do feel like I know what their plan is for quarterback. Their plan is that they're going to have McCown mentor uh, Sam Darnold. They're, they just brought in Teddy Bridgewater to see, you know, does he have anything left and perhaps be a suitable backup. But the plan is to have Sam Darnold be the starting quarterback for the for the uh, team. And, of course, the running backs, they have Isaiah Powell and Elijah McGuire. And I was pretty shocked when they signed Isaiah Crowell. I mean, he is a short yardage back, but uh, I thought they had a nice duo with uh, McGuire and uh Powell, because I thought Powell's a nice uh, third down back, good receiving back with enough speed and power to be a main back. And then, you know, you have uh, McGuire be the relief, not only relief back, but, you know, just kind of swap in every now, so in and out every now and then. So, um, so you can give Powell a break. But with Crowell, he's primarily a, a two down back, has some good power and speed, had an uh, uneven years with, uh, with the Browns. But this is this is kind of interesting to see. I don't know what I don't know if he'll be the main backup to Powell or 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 something. But it's it's going to be interesting to see. The wide receivers they got a they have a very underrated wide receiving core with Robbie Anderson and Jermaine Curse, who they traded for during the season, um, may end up to be a decent uh, combo. They also got they also signed Terrell Pryor. As at wide receiver after a very down year at Washington, they also have Sharon Peak, uh, Quincy and Noonbots coming back from injury, uh, Chad Hansen, Ardarius Stewart. They got a lot of young wide receivers. Some of them are probably going to be cut, say like Devin Smith. But it's it's nonetheless very crowded. They have a. It's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to be formed. I, I do think the starters are going to be. Uh, Robbie Anderson, if you can stay out of trouble, and uh, Jermaine Curse. Uh, the other guys, it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting to see to see if Terrell Price will has something left, and which young and which of the young receivers are, are gonna step up and be um, on the team and help contributing with their young quarterback Sam Donald. And of course, the tight ends they got they're going Jordan Leggett the starter most likely. They signed Clive Walford. They signed Bucky Hodges. It's okay. It's nothing. It's nothing to really go about. But I'm curious to see how Leggett does perform in year two. Offensive line is definitely a major question. Kellen Benjamin still the left tackle. The center is probably going to be Trevor Win. I'm sorry, Trevor. No, Travis Swan. Travis Swanson. Well, the guards being Spencer Long and Brian Winters. No, I'm sorry, not Winters. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not spent along uh, James Carpenter unless they plan on putting him at tackle. But this is an interesting group. It's interesting to see because it's not really exactly formed. They got they got some players they might want to try out, but you could you can basically pencil in a lot of these guys are just gonna be penciled as starter and no and they're not gonna really waste any ink. It's gonna be Alternating, you're gonna see a lot of competition between with this offensive line. Just seeing, you know, what's gonna happen and uh, who who can be the starter, who's gonna be the bench player, etc., etc. Overall, this is a decent offense. I don't know if Sam Donald's at, at ever at all gonna start. Uh, might be if he does, it could be when the season's kind of out of reach and they're having uh, and they want him to and they want to see how he can do. It's going to be interesting to see how Teddy Bridgewater does because everyone's wanting to see, you know, is he back? Is he going to be good? And that kind of such. But I don't think there's ever there's ever going to be a moment where he's going to be the main guy, the starting quarterback with the Jets. It's it's all on Sam Donald. They're prepping him. 
And it's funny how teams pick on the Browns for having for basically having no good starting quarterback for for the past twenty years or such. When the Jets haven't had a had a legit starting franchise quarterback since Namath, and they're really hoping Donald can break the mold and can be uh, their starting quarterback for the next ten to fifteen years. But with this team, it's but with this offense that they built for him so far, it still has a lot of work to do, especially on the offensive line. When they find when they got their five guys that they want, it will be at that point they'll say, Okay, we're ready to go. This is this is gonna be the turn turning point. When they sort it out through everything, when they have the when they have the core essential players, it'll be at that point they'll have an improved offense. And looking at their defense, they did make some major turnover, like cutting Muhammad Wilkerson and also trading Sheldon Richardson. I, I think they trade. I believe, yeah, they trade him uh, last off season. So it's all run. So now your main star is now uh, Leonard Williams. Uh, they have him paired with. Uh, they somehow got Henry Anderson. I forgot how they got him. I don't know if they trade. I, th I think they traded for him. And also, they got they got a couple other players that they could play, but uh, it's that's really nothing worth noting. It's a solid defensive line. Can probably pl can play the run fairly decent, and uh, it's and it's deep. It's decent. It's not it's not bad by any means, but it's not but it's also not good. I mean, not great. It's, it's above average. Live back in court, they let Demario. Di Davis walk and brought in Anthony, I'm sorry, Avery Williamson from the Titans, uh, pairing up with Darren Lee at linebacker. They got some edge rushers that they want to try out. Lorenzo Malden, Jordan Jenkins are probably the main ones, with also maybe Courtney Upshaw getting some play every now and then. It's a it's a defense that's a work in pro, it's a work in progress essentially. Trying to they're trying to get more stars and more and more notable players. They're trying to get more stars, well, just overall more talent. The safety core, the safety backfield is definitely something I really enjoyed watching. With uh, Jamal Adams and Marcus May, be, seeing, seeing them draft one and two is definitely interesting. I think Adam, Adams is going to be a real star, real talent, uh, a good guy to pair up with uh, Wilkerson, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Leonard Williams. And May, I, and Marcus May, I think he can improve. But it's just one of those things where we just it's a wait and see moment. While the cornerback, Buster Screen was picked on a lot and they really ha they have a solid guys, but really nothing too flashy. I guess Rashad Robinson that they trade that they got in a trade from the uh 49ers could could be noteworthy. Maybe to see how Mo Claiborne does once again. Oh oh yeah, they signed Tremaine Johnson free agency, so that that's a that is definitely a plus signing. I think you're probably going to see Robinson and uh, <clears throat> and Johnson probably be at the start of the screen, being bust the screen, either maybe getting released or being the uh, slot guy. It's a it's a decent uh, backfield. I, I still think probably their better one was uh, 2010. I thought that was a lot better when they had Revis and and a prime Cromart. In a in his prime, Antonio Cromartie, but the defense is solid. All the, is pretty solid with with some weaknesses. Probably being probably going at the being uh, the edge rushing category. I do like uh, Leonard Williams, and I think uh, I think Henry Anderson, pending if he can stay healthy, could do well in that scheme. But this is just this is just a bit of a mess. Uh, Todd Bowles, I really. I really think he's a smart defensive coordinator, and he tried his best, but he he what well, he was not working with probably with the best of players in 2017. But I can see this defense maybe being ranked 20th at best, just judging by the talent they have. It's just that who knows what the offense is going to be like if they're on the field countless times, then uh, that defense is definitely going to struggle. And um, they do, and I want to see him. A little more talent. I want to see a true number one corner kind of step out. Tremaine Johnson uh, ha has some of some makings of being a number one corner, but to me, he's more of a he's more of a complimentary guy. But they definitely have some players that they do that they do think 
will step up and perform well. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this young team does because that's one thing they got both on offense and defense. A lot of young players that they that are that they hope can step up and play well. And of course we're gonna schedule, of course, you know, you have to play in the AFC East playing against a team like, you know, the Patriots twice, and you have to face the Bills who gave them some trouble, then the then the Dolphins, and then the rest of the schedule. They got a couple easy games. Like going against the Br like going against the Browns. But the rest of it is very tough. They have to play the Lions. They have to play the Vikings, the Bears, the Packers, the, Bron the Broncos, the Texans, and the, t the Titans and the Colts. So this is a this is a very tough schedule for them. They got, especially uh, with the kind of players that they have, just kind of hoping which young player sees, uh, kind of really steps up. And if they can get the right, and if the young players can step up at the right moment, I think... They still won't make the playoffs, but they won't have a, that bad of a record. I think, at best, this is a 7-9 and nine team, at best. But at worst, this is a 5-11 like a and 11 or 4-12 and 12 team. Just a ton of young players with a tough schedule, and this isn't exactly what, you know, this kind of team needs to be a, uh, a real dominant force. I don't know if they'll ever make it back to the playoffs. They haven't been there since... Uh, 2010, uh, the second year of the Rex Ryan era, and this kind of schedule isn't isn't bringing any good news for them. I think they're going to struggle with the NFC North, you know, because I think even the Bears improved well. You still got to face the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. That will be a buttload of trouble. Then you have the Vikings, unless you know they start, they just get fortunate uh, matchups where their opponents are just really beat up or. Pending anything interest or pending anything interesting, they actually have an opponent where they match up well against them, like say against the Browns on Thursday Night Football. Then it's a it's a different then it's a different story. But otherwise, it's a team that it has some it has some weaknesses, a lot of a lot of potential, but this is not the skin, but nothing really solid or concrete it's not a it's not like how they were last year where they were called the least talented team in the nfl but this is not a team that i i can see really developing into a not only a potential playoff team but really a good team not yet though i think i think they're probably a draft away from being from being that team they just they just need to stockpile more stars and hope and hope and that some of the young players that they have can step up and play play well. well tomorrow I'm going to cover the Bills, then the Patriots on Thursday, and conclude NFC East with a wrap-up video. Till then, catch you later.